Hello, I am Serial Memoir. I've been streaming Yisian for about a year now, and welcome to my new player's guide. This section is just going to be a brief overview of the flow of the game and how to get started. I'll have a few later videos going into each of the characters and sects in a little bit more details. So, when you boot up the game it will look something like this. Most likely it's going to have a different character here. First thing you want to do, make sure your language is in English, if that is the language you would like to play. After that, you can hop straight into start game. There are a few modes presented to you right up front. Um, this gives you a look at the card gallery, this gives you a look at each of the different characters. Generic Immortal Fates, Divination, don't worry about all this stuff too much right now. Jumping over here into the start game section, you have a handful of options. I would recommend starting in either casual mode, which is free to try all characters, no rank points, so you, before you have to invest in any of your rather generous in-game currency, you can just jump in and see which character you like the most. Or the single player, the Sect Esoteric Inheritance is your puzzles. Uh, you can replay the tutorial if you want, or do the single player roguelike, which is a great way to get started as it doesn't have any timer. You can take your time reading the cards and all that kind of thing. But now let's jump into practice mode. Uh, this lets you play against bots, uh, or you can also invite other people into play if you want. We're just going to start with the default Mui Fang here and just hit go. And as you can see, I've got some easy puppets up against me here. As the game boots up, the first thing you're going to do is draw five cards. These cards will be from what we call your sect. These should look fairly familiar if you have played the tutorial. You start the game with three card spaces unlocked, so you can just drag cards up here in order to make a board. There's some information along here. Your max HP, you don't have to pay too much attention to. Your cultivate and your exchange numbers are your main sources of information that you need to pay attention to. Um, you have a certain number of exchanges every turn, so by dragging a card here, you can exchange it for a new card. This character gets one free exchange, which is why that number didn't decrease, but that will go down as you exchange your cards. You can also absorb cards by dragging them to your character or by right-clicking on them. And you can combine cards by just dragging them together. All this stuff should be pretty familiar if you played the tutorial. As you absorb cards or combine cards, your cultivation will go up. And as you hit this threshold, you can break through to the next level, which gives you access to stronger cards. Once the fight starts, your cards will play from left to right, and your opponents will do the same. So in this case, Tanshian is leading with Palm Thunder, followed by Wind Hexagram, and then we won't see this third card till she plays it, striding into the wind. This fight, I went first. I have two cultivation, and Tanshian also has two cultivation, which means it's a coin flip to decide who goes first. Usually whoever has a higher cultivation goes first. On turn two, you get to pick a side job. By default, you'll only have Elixirist unlocked. I'll go into these in a later video. Don't worry about them too much. The important thing is you have access to these special Elixir cards that any side job will have. Similar to last turn, we've now got three exchanges again. Last turn, I used all my exchanges. This turn, I can use zero of them and just hit ready. And you'll see that because I finished the turn with three, next turn I'm going to have six exchanges. This fight, I am at four cultivation and my opponent is at three. As a result, I went first. No coin flipping here. I'm always going to go first. Earth Spirit Elixir is a consumption card. Uh, that means it gets played once and you can see here how it's grayed out compared to the cards next to it. The next time I get to this card, it won't play. It's been consumed and will instead go back to the start. That consumption effect only lasts for the one fight. Uh, it's not like a permanent removal. It generally reduced me to zero, so I lost four destiny. You can see my destiny either up here, or I guess you can only see it up here right now. Uh, 96 destiny, when that reaches zero, you are dead. So that is the that is the resource for the whole game. This turn I'm gonna combine this card. As you can see, I have six exchanges. That is because I saved the three from last turn. I have seven cultivation. If I absorb this card and this card, you see I now have the option to break through. That pops up a list of immortal fates. Your immortal fates are kind of like a passive. They affect the rest of the game. You can draw cards. Well, I've got three options to draw cards. Your character's leftmost immortal fate is their default. Every character has a set of unique immortal fates. By, de by default, this will be the only one unlocked. So let's just click on that. Now, as I exchange cards, you'll see I have this regard, which has a green border. 
The screen border means it's a level two card. So since I clicked the breakthrough button and got to level two, I now have level two cards. At 21, I'll gain access to tier three cards. And at 36, I'll gain access to purple cards. So I can use my exchanges here, find more consumption cards, cloud swords. I can upgrade my cards as we go. And just hit next. That's the general flow of battle. The only other thing I will show you is that you cannot have more than two consumption or continuous cards. That's uh, just a rule of the game to stop you stacking your deck with a bunch of consume cards. If you don't put a card in a slot, it turns into normal attack, which just does three damage, which is not great. Uh, you would prefer to not do that uh, in most circumstances. Otherwise, you will simply not win fights. So after this fight goes through, we'll draw another elixir and I'll show you that you cannot put enough consumption cards on the board. But that's the general flow of it. When you break through again, you'll have access to another Immortal Fate, which will provide you additional power. And you can just play through this game until you win or lose. Let's see if we can find that consume card. On turn four, you have the option of a Dower Shrine. What this does is gives you four choices. You can either draw a card now, or when you get to tier four, you can draw this card or this card. Or you can say, when I get to tier five, I would like this card. So gold is the tier five cards. Purple is the tier four cards. And if you had, I do this, you can see down here, I can see the inspiration sword that I selected. When I get to tier four, I will immediately get a copy of that card in my hand. All right, let's see if we can find a consumption card. Yeah, so you see here, I'm not able to draw, drag the third consumption card onto my board. For basic gameplay, that's pretty much it. Uh, you'll simply go through the rounds, breaking through when you can, drawing more cards, fighting opponents, once you hit zero destiny, you are eliminated. If all your opponents hit zero destiny before you do, you win. That's it for the basic intro. I'll be moving on to do character and faction overviews in the next video. So if that sounds good, stick around. Otherwise, good luck with your games.